This is peak cinema. Over the weekend, Dune Part 2 released in cinemas and exceeded everyone's expectations. In fact, it took everyone's expectations, absolutely demolished it, and set a new standard for science fiction cinema that I doubt will ever be reached again. I watched this masterpiece twice over the weekend, and yes, the movie is that good, and no, I am not getting paid to say this. Dune Part 1 was a great movie. But understandably, some people had reservations, especially non-sci-fi fans. It was slower paced, with minimal action, and an overall confusing world and non-linear plotline. Dune Part 2 has everything that made Dune Part 1 great. It's world building, it's characters, it's immersion with visuals and sound, and none of the weaknesses. It was truly an action movie this time around, with good pacing and a story that a literal idiot would be able to understand. I can only describe it as the most epic cinematic experience of my life. The first thing that stands out is the stellar A-list cast. Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Rebecca Ferguson, Leo Seydoux, Stellan Skarsgård, Dave Bautista, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin, and the legendary Christopher Walken. Every performance was great, no flaws to even nitpick. You can tell every actor and actress spent time and effort into their preparation and performance, even for a minimal amount of dialogue or screen time sometimes. This is on top of filming in a literal scorching desert in Abu Dhabi. I think the performances that stood out the most were Austin Butler's Fade Rotha and Timothy Chalamet's Poor Atreides. Who knew bold Elvis fighting Willy Wonka would be one of the most intense fights ever? The plot is more focused towards action and storytelling in Dune Part 2, thus it is less convoluted and much more straightforward compared to Dune Part 1, which focused towards world building and exposition preparation. Denis Villeneuve masterfully orchestrated the build up of events into one of the most immersive and rewarding climaxes in all of storytelling. Seriously, I had goosebumps towards the climaxes because the payoff from the build-up was so satisfying. When it comes to the magical world-building of Dune, credit has to go to Frank Herbert, who is the author of the novels and the creator of this world. He single-handedly inspired a whole genre of films. For example, George Lucas took a lot of inspiration from Dune for Star Wars. However, that isn't to say Denis did not do a brilliant execution, incorporating mass on mass of ideas and bits and pieces from the Dune world into the short length of the movie. Can you call 2 hours 46 minutes short? It suddenly went by quickly though. Now here is where we get into the meat of it all. Dune's visuals were insane. The cinematography is insane in pretty much every single scene of the movie. Endless transitions between minuscule characters on breathtaking, scaleless backdrops to detailed close-ups of the characters' nuanced immersions create an atmosphere that can only be described as epic, transporting you to the world of Arrakis itself. Props to Greg Frazier, the cinematographer who is slowly becoming the goat of cinematography. Just look at his filmography, Dune Part 2, Dune Part 1, The Batman, Rogue One, and so on. Just as a comparison, Dune Part 2 had a budget of $190 million, whereas something like The Marvels had a budget of $270 million. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is what truly transcended this movie to be a peak piece of entertainment and artwork. This is what separates this movie from other great movies into a one-of-a-kind epic cinematic experience. Sound If you knew everything going into the cinema, down to the last line of dialogue, you would have just as good of an experience as someone who knew nothing about the Dune world at all. My ears ate a three course meal at a five star restaurant whilst getting a foot massage, whilst listening to the Dune soundtracks. It's that good, it's got me creating paradoxes. Now, at this point, Hans Zimmer has to be a god. Bro invented a new flute out of literal PVC pipes for the soundtrack. The absolute madman started composing straight after Dune Part 1 came out back in 2021, before Dune Part 2 was even confirmed. He already won an Oscar for his work in Dune Part 1 and will likely do so again this year. And it's not just the music and soundtrack, the actual sound effects were phenomenal as well. Everything was so epic. Every time something big shows up on screen, the sound make it behemoth. Every time something important happens, the sound make it generational. Um, I actually found the sound to be too loud. Silence! I got goosebumps watching this movie, even the second time around. 
Goosebumps, best film of the year, best sequel since Godfather Part 2, best science fiction film of all time, definitely a personal top 3 of all time. This movie was the embodiment of epicness. It is more epic than Endgame, than Avatar, than Lord of the Rings. Dune Part 2 is the ultimate epic masterpiece that can only be described as the most immersive cinematic experience you will ever have. Don't miss out on peak fiction.